others. See, here's the, here's the goal, guys. Here's the goal. You need to be, you have to understand that we have to learn to look at people not as opponents, but as people. Not a, we have to learn to look, as peop, look at others not as opponents, but as people. Same people that you might disagree with. Does it mean that, hey, uh, be a wishy-washy Christian? Like if somebody has this policy or has this political idea that's, that's not good or you don't like it, does it mean just wishy-washy, we all get along, just hug and kiss or whatever? No, okay? Because it, there's going to be a constant argument about what is best for people. And what did God say here? You seek the welfare. You seek what's best for the people. And guys, what is, what is best for everybody? I'll tell you, and I'll make the argument, God is what's best. So, yeah. Shining bright, shining bright for Jesus and not shying away. Shining bright might get you burned. Shining bright might get you burned. But how can we withhold the solution that, that our nation, that our people, that they need the most? And so here's my, here's my thing I want you to think about. If you ever get caught in, a, in an argument with somebody about policy, about politics, about this and that, it could be you can be arguing with your brother and sister about something stupid, okay? It could be about friends or a boyfriend, girlfriend thing. It could be a mom and dad. You can be fighting with your kids. No matter what conflict and struggle you get into, I want you to remember this. Now, let's take away from this. Remember that Jesus died for the person on the other side of your opinion. Jesus died for the person on the other side of your opinion. And so if you get stuck, if you get in an argument or one of what's, what's best for people, understand that what's best for people is what is God himself. And so though there might be a conflict, there might be a different way of, you know what, I think I should approach this differently. But if you always remember that God died for the other person, I mean, God died for the person on the other side of your opinion, you'll have more compassion towards that person. You're not going to see that person as an opponent, but as a person. And you can reflect Jesus even in a difficult circumstance. Parents, I think that this would be a great application too. When you get into an argument with somebody, husbands, wives, and you get into an argument with somebody, if you remember that Jesus died for the person on the other side, it'll help you to not maybe push that button, ladies, that, put, that button that you just wait for. When your man says something, you're like, oh, I'm going right there, okay? It'll help you to keep that emergency code on lock a little bit, right? Fellas, fellas, the same thing. We just want to lose it and whatnot. You just want to do whatever and just get all big and stuff. If you remember that, If you remember that, that'll make a big difference in your family. That'll make a big difference in your marriage. When you get with your kids and you start yelling at your kids or whatever, that'll make a big difference. Kids, you know, if you don't got a job and something, if if you realize that, hey, my parents and me might not see things on the same level, but if I can remember that God loved them too, that might help you calm some, you know, I hate you, I hate you. So, you know, that might help you from not going there. That might help you. But especially when it comes to politics. And government. We have to always remember that Jesus died for the person on the other side of your opinion. But at the same time, you know, Jesus gave his life for what was best. And so this strategy, this plan that I feel that God is calling us to, not as a current church, but as a church as a whole. You know, I don't think it's going to be one big rally and we're going to sweep in and take in and, you know, everything's going to turn around in two seconds. You never know. But you have to have a long-term strategy. You can't, you can't get the White House right if you can't get your house right. And so it has to start where we are. It has to start where we are.